right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and as part of the Rankin Technical College EWD 1111 class for the fall 2020 semester at Rankin, I've been going through a series of video presentations for the textbook for the class, which is Get Programming with Node.js by Jonathan Wexler, a Manning publication. And I'm in Lesson 7. The author breaks the book up into units, and there's a seven or eight units, and also into lessons, which pretty much uh, correspond to chapters. There's eight lessons, and there's a total of 37 lessons, so I'm on lesson seven. And in lesson seven, this is the first time we're working on our Confetti Cuisine project, and I'm in section 7-4. So as it says here, the views are client-facing and could make or break any user's experience with the application. We'll use a similar template for each page. Well, that's a good idea. Not only does it re reduce complexity, but it brings a, a sense of familiarity, or if you want to call it that. All right. The top of each page should have some HTML layout, a head, a link to the soon-to-be-built custom style sheet, and navigation. The home page will look like this. Not really a whole heck of a lot, but when you look at it, what do we have here? We've got a title. We've got links. We're on the home page now, but we've got links to the courses page and the contact page. All right, the title's got kind of a 3D look to it, or the whole navigation section up here. And then we've got a, a, an image. And welcome, please check. At least what's nice is uh, the person who wrote this, they've actually got content in here. I hate, you know, sometimes you see lipsum or lorem ipsum content, which is fine when you're first starting to create something. But after a while, you should put some real content in there, and that's what the author's done. So, for the home page, we'll create a new view called index.html in the views folder and add context specific to the index page. Because we're using Bootstrap, we need to link to that. And the way the author has done that, just so you know, is to go out to bootstrap.com, which is going to Okay. Bootstrap. There we go. Getbootstrap.com. My fault. And when you go to the download here, okay, if you go to the download, what you're going to get in the compiled CSS and JS is you'll get a file in there that basically, for lack of better words, is a minified version of bootstrap.css. You can use the minified or the non-minified version. All right. Next, as it says, we create a courses.html file to show off a list of the available cooking courses and a contact.html file that has the following form. Now, a couple things that are on here that are important, all right, such as the form, as it says, submits contact information via a post. Now, virtually everything we've been doing in here thus far has worked off of a get. A get is designed to provide information, but not to allow a user to change any information. And when you think about it, with what we're doing in here right now, we are indeed changing information. Because once the user fills out this form, which has just an email on it, all right, and then a submit button, we want to make sure that it posts back, or in other words, that we link it all right, to our project. Okay, so it says the forms code should resemble the following listing. It's very small. The site's contact page, it says, will look like figure 7-2. Well, we've got a, an image here, but before the image, this is everything that's here. So what do we have here? The form itself is just these two lines. All right. The email, 
and the submit button. So that's about as simple of a form as you can possibly create. Each page links to the others through the navigation bar. As the author says, we need to make sure that all the assets that are being used in these files are accounted for when creating the routes. If any assets are missing, the app could crash. So in other words, if you're telling the system you want this image, that image better exist. If you tell the system that you want that image, that image better exist, etc. So the author says, we'll add these assets to the pages, or so will the pages, we'll have resources for richer content. All right, because it's boring to just look at text. It's boring to just look at a background color. So for this application, as mentioned, the author has added some custom styles that can be used by each of the views. Any color, dimension, or placement changes we want to make, we'll go into confettiquisine.css which lives in our public CSS folder alongside bootstrap.css. So if you look right here in our confetti cuisine, if we look at what we have, notice that we have a public folder. And in that public folder, we've got a CSS folder. And there's the bootstrap.css file. And there's the confetti cuisine file. Now, it's not humongous. It's 60 lines. All right. And we are Im importing a Google font into this. All right. Baloo and uh, I don't even know how you pronounce that. Hyena. And again, the way that Google fonts works, you should know this already, is quite often you've got two fonts that work in conjunction with one another. All right. When this file is saved, the view will have colors and structures when loaded. The author says, if I decide to use any client-side JavaScript, I'll need a .js file to go in the .js folder. And I think right now, I could be wrong, I believe that that is empty. We don't have any client-side JavaScript in here. Well, but I think there's nothing in this. So we've got an empty file. All right. So we've got this file that's got our CSS. We've got an empty JavaScript file. We've got the bootstrap.css file. And this is going to be humongous. All right, because it's bootstrap, and there's, what, 8,200 lines in it. I'm going to close that because I don't want to take a chance on hurting anything that's in either one of these. All right, so that is what's in our public folder plus we've got images in there and those images if we look at these the first one here this is going to show up when we've got an error alright I don't know why that's what the author used this we've already seen is on our contact page this is on our home page and I don't remember what that is on to be honest with you alright it says product.jpg, so we'll see. So the only step left is registering and handling any routes for the assets in the project. What I had been doing is I had been in doing one lecture like this for each of the sections. This is going to be called 7.4 and 7.5 because 7.5 is literally two paragraphs. All right. So I'm going to come up right now and go over section 7.6 in just a couple moments.